Hi guys, this is Mr. V, and this is uh, episode two of topic of unit one for the Apes Review. Um, and today's topic is about terrestrial biomes. Okay, so a biome is a large swath of land, um, in this case, that is going to be uh, characterized by a few things. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this section. So the environments are distributed around the world um, for different reasons, right? Um, biome distribution in particular is based on a couple of factors. Um, you know, it's about rain, which is precipitation or snow. Um, and then average temperature is a big deal. And then of course, uh, geography, which is what the land is made out of elevation wise, mountains, flatlands, things like that. Uh, what latitude it's at, that means um, what, la what um, position on the planet it is. And then the altitude as well, depending on how high it is, depending if it's a mountain area or a valley, things like that. Um, the nutrient availability, right, in the uh, soil particularly. And the big thing I want you to remember about biomes is that it's about the climate, not the weather. Okay, weather is a day-to-day -day thing, climate is a long-term thing. And so those factors determine the biome itself, but what also helps determine the biome is going to be the plant and the animal species as well. So. Those things, those plants and animals, they end up uh, adapted to a biome, and that further characterizes it. So it kind of works hand in hand together. It's not just one or the other; it's both, or it's all those reasons. So the first thing I want to mention here is, and this is not something that you don't that is expected of you until later in the units. Um, mainly, it's in the uh, College Board uh, course description in unit around four or five. But I wanted to bring it up earlier so you understand. How these biomes work. So um, you're going to see that these biomes uh, typically are characterized by these climatographs or climatograms, right? So you're going to see that they have three axes. The first axis um, is going to be uh, your X, which is going to be your uh, months of the year. And then usually on the sides, you're going to have average precipitation and average temperature. These may change on which side they're at, but you typically end up with a line graph as well as a bar, uh, bar graph at the same time, okay? And so this ends up letting you know how the climate is long term. So this is, for example, is a grassland climatograph. So you see that throughout the months of the year, the temperature itself rises quite a bit um, in the summer months. So uh, May, June, July, August, and then it falls in September, October, November, December, and continues through up until April until it's rising back again. At the same time, precipitation, you end up with more of a spring rain, a little bit of a drop in the summer, and then a precipitous drop um, in the fall and winter. So um, this way you can read this and you can interpret it. You will be asked to interpret it um, on the AP exam or uh, it may be part of a question you have to answer. So a quick run through of the biome so you can understand. Uh, one of the first ones mentioned is, in the CED is the taiga, right? The taiga is a subarctic forest. Um, as you can see from the climatograph, um, the um, temperature itself uh, rises a little bit in the summer, but if you look at the uh, scale here, even though it's rising, um, that's not very hot, right? It's looking at about maybe 12 to 15 degrees Celsius. Um, and the rainfall itself tends to be pretty low as well. So the reason for this, it has permafrost, which leads to these bogs or these pools of water kind of collecting. Um, <clears throat> and they're pretty famous for their coniferous forests. Um, they do tend to have the largest deer in the world, like caribou and stuff like that. Um, mainly they have some birds and migration that are migrating all the time um, and lots of rodents uh, that tend to be the main prey for these birds of prey raptor type animals um, and for the taiga the biome that's the, the threat that that biome is facing quite a bit is clear cutting um, that they're removing that stuff as well as climate change due to the rise in temperature that's going to lead to a melting of the permafrost okay and then uh, temperate rainforests, as you can see right here, they're called rainforests. Uh, sometimes they don't get a lot of rain. Um, it tends to be a lot of, uh, of just kind of mist and dew and stuff like that. But their precipitation uh, is a little higher. And their temperature uh, is markedly higher than the taiga. So you can see right here the scale, it goes up a bit. And then down here, our precipitation uh, is a little higher in the wintertime. So we would call this a mid-latitude forest. It's got some pines and what we call broad-leafed evergreens. So these are plants that um, they have uh, wider leaves, but they stay green the whole time. 
Um, and this has some of the tallest trees in the world. So if you think of a redwood tree or the redwood forest in California, um, that's what those trees are. It's got a very deep humus layer, right? Um, that's the type of organic material that's going to be very nutrient rich. So it's a, that's why it's one of the characteristics of it. Um, and then it's got pretty diverse animal wildlife. So it's got unique uh, animals depending on the habitat. These tend to be in the, in the United States. It tends to be more of a Pacific Northwestern. So um, that tends to be a little bit different. Um, and then you've got some cool climate, but some summers and winters are a little bit more mild. So um, it tends to not be too big of a problem there. And the big problem with them is they have deforestation and climate change being their threats. Okay. And then um, for uh, temperate seasonal forests, these are the ones that are your more typical deciduous type forests. So that you have, uh, they're characterized mainly by their color changes. So you can see right here in the picture, there's a lot of uh, oranges and reds and yellows. That's because what happens is they're more common to have seasons, right? So they're going to have warm and cold air masses coming in all the time. Um, and so they're going to have very nutrient filled soils and the trees prepare themselves for the winter by dropping those leaves. So you see this color change first and then they drop the leaves and the leaves end up um, providing nutrients for the soil so the plant can make it through the winter. Um, flowers and trees tend to bloom again in the spring and the summer and you get all kinds of common animals like hawks, uh, deer, raccoons, uh, things like that. And then uh, again their problem is clear cutting but they also face acid rain as a threat because these tend to be in kind of the um, industrialized areas that are close by and like in the uh, American Northeast. Um, so they end up having a lot of industries so they can end up uh, being victims to acid rain. Then we have the tropical rainforest, okay, which is a pretty uh, common one. But a couple things to remember about the tropical rainforest is that yes, it has uh, optimal abundant uh, rain and warmth. And you can see right here, the precipitation is way, way high. And so is the temperature much, much higher too. This is in degrees Fahrenheit, so you can see on there. Um, but one of the big characteristics is it's got very poor soil nutrients, okay? So it's got a lot of massive plant growth and every layer it's got um, the uh, multiple layers, the canopy, the subcanopy, the shrub layer, the ground layer, they're all covered in plants. So because of that, as soon as something dies, nutrients are immediately taken up and so the soil tends to be very, very poor in this biome. Um, it's very biodiverse, uh, depending on the country or location, the population varies, but they've got several threats uh, to worry about as a rainforest. They've got climate change, um, farming, agriculture, and clear cutting. Um, and then another big th uh, problem is hydroelectric projects, right? So that's the building of a dam, because then you can end up uh, flooding areas that should not be flooded, or you can end up drying out areas that should be able to um, get more rain and keep that rain. So that's a, a problem they're facing as well. Then you've got shrublands. Okay, if you look at shrublands, these tend to be your typical um, uh, dry summers, okay, very high temperature summers, um, very mid latitude. They get more rain than deserts, but not as much as forests. Um, you see some shrubs and grasses, some aromatic herbs like uh, rosemary and thyme and stuff like that. And they do have some small trees, but not very tall. Um, and they're kind of characterized by their um, uh, mountainous regions a little bit as well. So they do tend to have some shrubs, but they tend to be surrounded a lot by mountains. Um, they also have a lot of rodent populations, and they live in colonies, so this draws a lot of raptors or birds as predators. And they can also get wild uh, dogs and leopards, depending on where um, they are in the world. And their big problem is climate change, because um, if you can see right here, they're going to end up with much more drought. And so that's going to end up being a long-term issue. Then you've got temperate grassland. This is an amazing biome because it's got really, really good soils. It's got a very good soil profile here. Okay, and you see that dark layer up at the top? That means it's very nutrient rich. That's a good indicator of that, right? And they do have kind of uh, wet uh, summers, but they also have warm summers at the same time. And so they end up having mixes of grasses and forbs, which are little small plants that are on the ground. Very fertile soils, the most in the world. Um, and they have perennial grasses and some sunflowers and some pea plants, um, but they don't have a lot of biodiversity. The reason um, grasslands look the way they are is because the bison were the dominant um, herbivores historically in the United States. And so now you get pronghorn and um, very many, uh, I don't know, a few rodents, right? But the thing is, 
there's no trees because those large herds of buffaloes didn't allow trees to grow. Um, and so you know, that's one of the characteristics that historically made a biome like the um, uh, grassland look that way. And now the big fear that we have to worry about is they're overgrazed by cattle, right? There's a lot of agriculture and now urban, develop, urban development. That's where a lot of people want to live, right? So that's something that they have to uh, deal with. And, um, for our um, savannas, they're very similar to those, okay? Um, but the problem with the savanna is the soils are low fertility, okay? They tend to have like really uh, poor bedrock. And so because of that, it looks like a grassland, but it doesn't have uh, as much fertility in the soil, okay? Um, and so they have, they have the largest diversity of hoofed animals, right? Antelope, uh, different types of uh, hoofed animals all over the world. And if you think about it, it's kind of like your typical uh, I picture like the Lion King uh, when you look at those. So, um, and there's an abundance of termites, which make these big termite mounds. That's a big uh, uh, indicator that you can see one of these savannas. And they're big. Free, they have a lot of threats. So they have to deal with climate change. They have to deal with agriculture, um, overgrazing, and um, a lot of irrig irrigation practices because water gets moved quite a bit from those areas. And then they're not able to um, to uh, last as long as they should. And for deserts, these are your typical areas of very low precipitation, very high temperatures. Okay, Deserts are unique because they cover about a fifth of the surface of the planet. So it's very, very abundant. Um, they are biodiverse, so that's a uh, kind of like a common misconception that there's not a lot, a lot of biodiversity in a uh, desert, which is um, uh, unfortunate, but that's the truth. Uh, and the thing is that soils are uh, made of sand, gravel, stone, so there's not a lot of water retention. So the plants have to practice uh, water retention on their own in order to survive because of the extreme heat. And so they'll end up having a lot of spines so that they can't be eaten by animals. Um, the animals themselves tend to be smaller and they themselves have adaptations to deal with this. Um, and climate change actually threatens deserts that currently exist because what's going to happen is they're, they're used to having drought with maybe a couple of heavy rain spots a year or once every couple years. Well, if you have climate change and that rain doesn't happen, then the um, uh, at the desert itself is going to end up uh, getting worse. And then even though they're adapted, they're not adapted for long, long, long term. So, um, And then deserts are now spreading due to poor agricultural practices through desertification. Okay, and then uh, one of the ones to mention as well, the cold ones are the tundra, right? Tundra tend to be these mountainous areas with very small lichens and plants on the bottom. Um, very cold, full of permafrost. Um, and so there's no real true soil. So um, the rock serves as the ground, which means that you don't really have very many nutrients. So you have to have small mammals. They usually have a lot of layers of thick fur and fat. You do have some larger animals like polar bears, um, but they roam that area to look for food or try to get to uh, uh, water source or frozen glaciers so they can do their fishing and their big main threat is going to be climate change with melting ice and permafrost um, but then the other thing too is we found that air pollution can actually harm lichens and it's going to disrupt this really really fragile food web and food chain they have and so what's the long-term outlook for biomes right biomes are um, always changing in the past uh, historically they would change because of the earth's tilt um, atmospheric composition, volcanic activity, right? Even when an asteroid or a comet hit, that would change the climate of the planet. Well, right now, we are tending to be a major driver of that climate change. Um, and a big example of this is going to be because of desertification. So the areas that are in white, um, they tend to have low uh, soil performance and low soil resistance. So those areas are going to be ones that are growing uh, deserts. The ones in red tend to be uh, a little bit higher resistance. The ones you really want are the ones in green. So. If you look at this map here, um, you know, you've got a lot of white swaths of area that are ripe for desertification. That's going to be the problem because our poor agricultural practices are leading to those deserts expanding and uh, getting rid of areas that might be better for agriculture or at least more biodiverse. So uh, that's something that um, is going to be a problem long term. And so some other resources you can look at, these are all about the biomes, and these are where we got most of the uh, climatograms and other information. So hopefully that was helpful. And um, 
we'll see you in the next episode.